Dude, it rips. Okay, y'all need to try this thing. Welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a new truck from Glitchworks that is really, really interesting. Now, the build that I've done on it right now is far from the only type of build that you can do on this truck. Now, this truck is based on an International 200 Series pickup truck, and if you know what those are, you understand why this truck is so cool. If you don't know what those are, I highly recommend looking into them because they're really neat little trucks from an era that had a lot of variety variety in this particular segment. Now, the setup that I have on it right now is the more stepside style bed, but you have a lot of different uh different custom setups that you can do, which I'm going to be showing you uh y'all in just a moment. Now, this is a fully console friendly vehicle, although at the time of recording this video it, it has not yet been approved for console. However, in order to check, please reference the link in the description box below and then look up that particular mod on your console mod browser to see if it has dropped. Now, let's go ahead and go into the garage so I can show y'all the other types of customization that you can do to this truck. But first, we gotta start it up. That has got to be one of the best sounding classic startup and idle sounds I have heard in SnowRunner in a while. All right, let's go inside the garage. Now, this was the first version of the truck I built. However, you can go crazy with this thing. For example, you can turn it into a classic fire truck, which is perfect for the upcoming Season 9 expansion where you will actually be fighting fires. Now, you can also do a rescue truck, a wilderness ambulance rescue truck. This is also one of my favorite setups for this thing because what I love about it is that you can also do these old school skinny tile, uh, sk tile? Wow, I can't talk. Skinny style super swamper tires. When I say that phrase out loud, it kind of makes sense as to why I had a little bit of trouble saying it because it's kind of a tricky phrase to actually put together when you try to say it. Sometimes my brain and the words that come out of my mouth don't always make a fully direct connection, but y'all understand how that is sometimes. So let's go back into the garage once again and check out the next variant of this truck, the dump truck. This is a little bit more utilitarian. It's a little bit more of a simple build, but I love this one because this is a lot more, to me, this is more of a truck that you could use for both work and for scouting. I am curious though, let's see. Oh, I was, I was literally, I wanted to start it up because I wanted to see if the dump bed worked. It looks like it doesn't, but who knows, maybe Glitch will add that in the future. I would love to see that added. And finally, you have the tow truck variant. This thing is so sick because if you like doing recovery RPs in SnowRunner, this classic style tow truck could really do a massive, massive amount to essentially creating any kind of retro style recoveries that you could possibly want to create. Now, let's see. What can you do with this thing? Oh, you can control the boom. Oh, that's sick. How do you actually... What do you control it with? I'm actually trying to see... Is it... Oh, that's weird. Hold on. We're going to actually have to turn immersive mode off because... Let's see. Control boom. Oh! It's... Okay. Yep. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. I was messing with the sticks, and I completely forgot that a lot of people set that stuff to the triggers. So before we go any further now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to the first one that we created, and we're going to see what it's like off-road. And I'm actually really interested in seeing how this truck does, because with all of these different variety, you know, these different varieties of customizations that you can do, I really want to see how it does off-road, because having a ton of customization is one thing, but also having a truck that is super capable off-road is a whole other thing entirely. So we've brought it out here to Outback Overlanding, and we're going to see what this thing is made of when you get it out on some trails. Now, let's see. Let's go ahead and put it in low. It's diff lock always on, and we're going to go ahead and turn on the all-wheel drive as well. And right off the bat, I mean, this thing is putting in work. I do love these classic international trucks. It's kind of a shame that a lot of these rusted away and you never see them anymore. Like, I would love to see, and that's the, that's the thing too, I would much rather see old trucks like this with, you know, like 
scars and dents from trail damage and being wheeled and being used than with rust all over him, you know? Because there are a lot of people that are like, oh, I just want to, you know, restore it and let it sit in a garage. Me? Nah. I want to see that thing with, like, trail damage and stories behind, like, you know, a scar on the bedside from where it was climbing a rocky hill and it bounced off a tree. Like, I want to see stuff like that. I don't want to see him rust away. I want to see him get used. I want to see, you know, trucks like this be rebuilt, yes, but also used and loved because, you know, rebuilding something like this just to have it sit and, like, barely ever even change the oil, to me, that isn't loving the rig, you know? To love the rig, to me, is to rebuild it, yes, but to also take it out and use it, you know what I mean? Take it out, use it to its fullest, give it some trail damage, you know? Like, scar up the body panels a little bit, but, like, hey, you're in, you're loving the rig, you're enjoying it, it's living a full, it's living a full out life, you know what I mean? So, and, and I understand that that opinion might differ from some people, but still, God, these trucks were made to be used. They were made to be driven. We almost flipped it over. We were like inches away from flipping it over. This would make such a great like scout slash like, you know, uh, light duty work rig for like a campaign map though. And the beauty of it is, it can do that, but it can also bomb its way through some gnarly trails on a map like this. And I love how Glitch has kind of accurately recreated the way these leaf springs would feel. Like, they've got a little bit of flex, but they're certainly not going to flex like a modern coil setup, that's for sure. I know I probably just, ang like, angered all of the leaf spring people in the comments, but it's fine. Don't worry about it. I don't have anything against leaf springs. It's just one of those things where leaf springs just aren't going to have as much travel or be as progressive as something like a coil setup or especially a long travel coilover setup. It's just, you know, different types of suspension geometry. God, this thing is just moving, though. Look at it. Just cruising, dude. And I mean, yeah, that engine is screaming while it does it, but kind of satisfying because I kind of figured that with tires this big on something this old, unless you had a pretty gnarly re-gear, that engine would be screaming most of the time. Come on, there you go, there you go, there you go. Put those Mickey Thompson Baja pros to good use. Let's go. It does get down this little thing. It really does. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Look at the interior. Oh, that's sick. That's so sick. I love how, like, both the shifter for the transfer case and the shifter for the transmission are both modeled. Oh, dude! That horizontal speedometer works! And these massive mirrors work as well! And they're, like, dude, the definition on those is beautiful! Oh, Glitch, you knocked it out of the park again with this truck. Absolutely knocked it out of the park again. I love this thing. Beans loves it, too. What's the horn like? That's pretty standard. I was kind of wondering if it was going to be something standard or something a little bit more, you know, wacky and, you know, kind of like wacky and weird. Because I love wacky, weird horns in this game. This one, not so much, but I mean, well, it's not so much wacky and weird. Is, is that like some kind of weird damage? Oh, weird. So if you dent the back of the truck bed, it sort of like darkens it. That's very odd. I wonder if that's like a texture slash visual glitch. Not really sure. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sure if it is a glitch that glitch will sort it out. Ah, get it? Because, you know, glitch and glitch works and it, yeah, I'm going to shut up now and I probably made glitch works uh, very upset with that. Probably didn't, well, I don't know. Probably didn't make glitch upset. I mean, it's probably pretty hard to make glitch upset, to be honest. I mean, honestly, that was a little bit more of like a play on words with glitch's name than anything else. I meant nothing by that. I meant nothing by that whatsoever. Now, do we want to go down this way? I don't know. I haven't really been down that way in a while. I've been down there, like, once, but I don't think I want to go down that way today. I'm going to actually stay on this trail, and we're going to keep following on, uh, following it on down this way and see kind of where we end up and see what we can get ourselves into. Although, we're going to actually reset the time a little bit because I want to keep cruising along during the day and not at night because... 
nighttime in not only in SnowRunner, but in most games, just doesn't look good in videos. You know, like it looks good while you're playing, and it's kind of one of those weird things where nighttime in games can be really enjoyable and soothing and relaxing while you're playing a game, but showing nighttime in like 99% of games in a video is it just doesn't carry over the same way. And I don't know why that is. I, I guess it's probably because it's, you know, like, it, it's, it's not as bright, the colors are less saturated, it's less satisfying to the eyes to watch if you're not, you know, directly interacting with it from the standpoint of actually playing the game. And so that's probably why it doesn't translate over as well. But I don't know. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on that in the comment section down below. Yo, look at that! We just left it in auto and it climbed right on up out of there right on out of the riverbed all right putting in work with this little thing let's go absolute little beast of a truck just barreling down through this trail that is so sick all right let's go on and make a quick right the last time i was here i stayed to the left this time i'm gonna head down to the right i know where this goes but the beauty of this trail is that there's actually a lot of really cool obstacles on this kind of offshoot it gets a little overgrown, but that's actually part of the fun of it because it looks like it was traveled a lot less. It looks like a trail that you would really, you know, you would really have to go out of your way to find. And I just smashed into a tree. Nice! Gave myself a little bit of custom bodywork there. It's fine. Don't worry about it. All right, let's see if we can make it through this mud pit in automatic. It's going to be, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Let's go! Putting in work? All right! Will it stay in second? Will it hold gear? Will it hold gear? Yes, it will! Power down! Dude! Oh, that's deep. Forgot to put a snorkel on this one. I put a snorkel on, like, all of the other builds and not this one. Probably because I'm... I don't know. I did a dumb. I do a dumb sometimes. It's fine. There we go. Find the grip. The front axle. Full send. Woo! Easy! Oh my god, easy, 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 easy. Holy freaking crap. Oh, and out it goes. Yo, I am, I am loving this thing, dude. It's so good. It's so freaking sick. Like, wow. Oh my god. Dude, it rips. Okay, y'all need to try this thing. Y'all need to try this thing. This thing has no business being this fun. Like, I don't even know why this truck is this fun. It just is. Probably because it's like, yes, it's got that classic style. Yes, it's got, you know, the classic body lines that you want. And it's also, I think, the first International 200 Series in SnowRunner. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm correct on that. And it's overall just extremely fun to drive. So extremely fun to drive. But if y'all enjoyed this look at this genuinely incredible little truck, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Give this thing a try if you get the chance. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you are subscribed by hitting that subscribe button and turning those notifications on. And I will see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later.